Welcome to the channel, Smart Kiddos. Today we're going to continue teaching Scratch It coding. What are we going to learn today in this video? Today we're going to learn how to make a memory game in Scratch. So let's start. Okay, so I have renamed this game to Memory Card Game. And as you can see, I have created 10 variables. So I'm going to explain you what each mean. Make sure that card ID, flip, and matched are local variables. So when creating them, you should make sure that you click on for the sprite only for these variables. And for the rest of the variables over here, the seven variables here, make sure to click for all sprites since these are global variables. So what is card ID variable? This is the unique ID for the card. It helps identify the card. Flip variable will indicate whether the card is currently facing up or facing down. Matched variable will see if the card has already been matched, so it can't be flipped back again. Flip count will track how many cards have been flipped in the specific turn. It will reset after two flips. First card will store the card ID of the first flipped card in the turn. Second card will store the card ID of the second flipped card and it'll be compared with the first card. Matches will count the matches the player has found so far. Random index is like for shuffling. It'll randomly assign the card IDs to the sprites. And X posts and Y posts um, are the positions of the cards and it is used to set up the cards. Let's delete the scratch cat over here because we don't need this, okay? And let's start by creating the card costumes. All right, as you can see, I've created this card costume and I'm going to name this costume as card back, okay? So this is how the card will look like when facing down. Now I'm going to duplicate this over here so that I have one, two, three, four more cards. All right, so I have renamed these costumes to card one, card two, card three, card four, and I have given them each a different symbol. Now make sure the costumes are named like this and are in the same order as I've provided over here. Let's begin with the code. So when green flag clicked, when the game starts, we're going to set the flip count variable to zero. So what does that mean? Well, that means that we're going to reset the number of cards flipped at the start of the game, okay? And we're going to hide this sprite since we're going to use clones. So we don't want this original card or sprite to show. Here's the next part. I'm going to create a custom block to set up the card IDs and create the card clones. So I'm gonna to go to my blocks and I'm going to name this as deal cards, okay? So we have our custom block over here and I'm going to drag this block so that we are calling this custom block so that it can run its specific tasks, which we will give later. And make sure to drag this important code, delete this clone. Now, why am I dragging this? It's because the original sprite used is just a template to create the clones for the actual game. So we have to delete this so that the clones only remain. Let's make a list. Click on variable section and click on this button, make a list. I'm gonna name this card ID list. And make sure this is for all sprites. The main reason why we created this list is to store the pair of card number IDs so that each card clone can pick one number from that list and become that card and have that ID. So let me explain you what I've added over here. So for this custom block, it will do these specific tasks. First, we're gonna delete all of card list so that it empties the card list at the beginning so that we start fresh every time, okay? And then I'm adding one, two, 
three, four to card list. So what this does is basically we're going to add the card numbers. So each card will have a specific number to it, like one, two, three, four. And we're repeating this two times because we're going to have four pairs of cards. So we need to have eight IDs or eight cards. So it's going to be like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay. And then what we're doing is we're going to set the positions of the card to negative 150 for X and 100 for Y. So this sets the first card position at the top left corner of the board and cards will be placed based on this. Okay. And then we're going to basically create the eight card clones. We're going to loop eight times so that we have eight clones of the sprite and each will become one card. Okay. So here are the next code and I'm going to explain you what this means. So we're looking at what each card clone does when it is created. So when I start as clone, we're going to go to X pose and Y pose, which is the positions. So the clone moves to where it should be placed. Then we are, you can see, changing the X position by 100. So basically this will prepare the X position for the next card. So it will move to the next column, the next clone. And then we have a condition. Basically, if too far right, go to the next row. So if the X position is greater than 150, meaning it has moved off the screen to the right past 150, we're going to reset that X position to the left side. So that clone will move there. And then we're going to move or change the Y position down a row so the next card appears below. Okay? Now, when you run and see the clones, you will understand what I am saying. And then we're going to reset the card states. So basically, we're going to set matched to false and set flip to false since each card starts not flipped and not matched, right? Then we're picking a random card ID from the list. So we are doing set random index to pick. Right? So we're going to pick a random index number from the card ID list. It's like picking a card from a specific shuffled deck. Okay? And then we're going to assign the card ID. So what does that mean? Basically, we are going to set the clone's card ID to a random value from the list. Like the card could be 3 or 4 or 1. It could be set with any specific number from one to four. All right. And then we are deleting the random index of card ID list so that no other clone can use the same ID. And this ensures that all you get two of each card, no duplicates. And then we're switching the costume to card back. So it will start with the back of the card showing at first. And we're going to make the card visible. So that's why we're using show. So when you run the program, you should see the cards set up like this. Let's look at the next code, which I have added over here. So basically, when a player clicks on a card, right, what will happen? Well, first, if flip count is less than two, meaning less than two cards are flipped, and flip is equal to false, meaning this card hasn't been flipped already. If these two conditions match, then we can go with the next code, which is set flip to true. So what are we doing? We're going to make this card as flipped. We're setting that. And then we're going to switch the costume to show its actual face. So we're going to switch it to show its specific symbol. Now we're going to do that by using card ID plus one. What does this do specifically? Well, card ID plus one, basically it associates with the costumes which we have given in the beginning, which we have created. We're doing plus one because costume one is the back of the card. 
So we need to add one to get the right costume that shows the picture. That is why I'm telling you to please make sure that it is in this order, card back, card one, card two, card three, card four, then only this game will work. What's next? Well, we are changing flip count by one so that we increase the flip count, okay? And if the flip count is equal to one, meaning if it's the first card flipped, we're going to set first card to card ID. We're saving its ID to the first card. Else, if it is the second card which is flipped, then we are going to save or set its ID to the second card. Okay, that is what we are doing. And then we're going to wait 1.5 seconds. So this gives the player a moment to see the second card and then it checks for the match. So if the first card is equal to the second card, now make sure that all of this here is in the else condition. So else and then these two blocks and then if first card is equal to second card, if they match the ID, then we're going to change the matches. We're going to change the matches by one. So we're increasing the match count and we are going to broadcast or send a message to the other script to say that, hey, a match is found. Else, we're going to wait for 0.2 seconds. We're going to wait for a short time and we're going to send a message or a broadcast to flip back. The cards should flip back because there's no match. They don't match at all, these two cards, okay? And then we're going to reset the flip count to zero so we're prepared for the next round of flipping the two cards. Now, when I receive matched, which is the broadcast we have given here, right? If the first card ID and second card ID match or are equal, we're going to broadcast this message and this message checks if flip is true, so the cards are flipped, we're going to set match to true. So basically what this really does is it makes sure the cards stay faced up permanently. So this block locks in the matched cards. Okay, here's the other broadcast. Remember flip back, which we have given over here for the else condition. If the cards do not match, we're going to broadcast flip back. So here in flip back, if the flip is true, so cards are flipped and matched is false. So they're flipped, but there's no match in the cards. We're going to reset flip to false since we're going to turn the cards back down. So set flip to false and switch costume to card back. We are on the last part. So I've created a sprite called win. And I've just added this text over here in the code when clicked hide because this should not show in the beginning. And when I receive win show. So I'm going to add some block and I'm going to show you what this means. Now I'm in the sprite one card code. So when clicked, we're going to set the matches to zero. So basically in the beginning, we're going to reset the number of matches since there's no matches made and we're going to have a repeat until loop if matches is equal to four so all four matches are found game over you have won you found the matches so the game should recognize it as complete so that is why we're broadcasting the win message which if you see in the win sprite code it should show the text win And as you can see, each round is unique with the cards placed in a different order. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the notification bell. Bye!